Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of AMZ Seller Real Talk. My name is Curtis Johnson. As uh, as those of you who are following this podcast know, I'm the host of this show. Generally, we have Jade also, Jade with me, um, but she's dealing with her uh, daughter today, you know, parent stuff. The, see, that's the real side of the real talk. And with us today, though, we have um, someone who is a longtime friend of Managed by Stats and someone who we lean on for his technical expertise. Yes, also, he is probably one of the cooler groups in uh, in the Amazon community, uh, Titan Network, but he is also just a wealth of knowledge. So we have with us today the great, from the UK, Dan Ashburn. How's it going? Yeah, good, man. Thanks for having me, Curtis. Yeah, yeah, Glad no. I, I've been looking forward to this podcast for a while, to be honest. You know, you're just, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate so, it, man. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I, um, we kind of always start this podcast out by, um, you know, diving in a little bit on what is your background? How did you get into the Amazon space? I'm sure that, let's be honest, like most people don't know any one figure in the Amazon community mm. that well. So, you know, some people might have heard of you with Titan Network, but, you know, who is the real Dan Ashburn? Sure. Well, that is a big question, <laughs> but I, th I think if I if I dive in and sort of we need tears. We need tears yeah, just, by just the, the main of sort of milestones. <laughs> um, so, born and raised in the UK, found myself obsessed with computers at a young age. Was sort of making money online by sort of age 12, 13. Um, I remember when the Millennium Bug hit. That was a that was like a defining early memory, and I was yeah. in there trying to fix my dad's computers and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, age 13, built and sold my first website um, on a platform called GeoCities. That was owned by Yahoo at the time, if anyone knows what that is. Uh -huh. Respect. Um, went on from there into the world of online marketing, SEO, early days of PPC, um, and really got a reputation and known for being the kid in the in the neighborhood that was good at that stuff. Sure. And also started sort of generating online income through affiliate marketing, the early days of Amazon Associates, um, a lot of sort of back then ebook type affiliate marketing. Wow. Um, primarily with SEO and ranking sites in Google, um, pre Penguin and Pen, uh, Panda updates, pre all the sort of big changes in wow. Google. But yeah, really, really got my feet wet there. Um, very quickly um, sort of explored all those different options, moved from England to Spain, an island, a group of islands called the Canary Islands. Okay, yeah. So it was, was kind of this teenage kid balancing um, what could only be called the party life in, in Tenerife and having this skill set online. So generating money online, enjoying the beach, the sun, the sand, the bars, all that sort of stuff. Um, out there was building websites for like local bars, real estate companies, the sure. whole sort of the original side of building sites, running Google ads in the early days of, of when that was. So was um, there a buildup with you on in terms of like internet e-commerce or was it like, were you kind of just, you sunk your teeth right into it and you were instantly doing well well no there was definitely i mean there's definitely a build up this is where i am now is sort of nine ten years of professional uh churning away okay with another i want to say eight nine years i'm pushing sort of 17 18 years now online um of testing different things testing different models a wow. hundred failed business attempts before finding one that works um, ventures and different sort of campaigns tested with m real cash and wasted cash in SEO campaigns and stuff like that. So it wasn't an overnight thing. It was definitely a hard sort of slog of blood, Good. sweat, tears and earned experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I came back from Tenerife, um, found myself on the wrong path and quickly in the military. Um, was in the British Air Force for just shy of five years, did a tour over in the Middle East, wow. um, six month tour over there. Um, and in that I was in quite a technical role or supporting some of the sort of fighter jets here in the UK known as typhoons, um, doing the technical pieces there. So a very technical role. Uh, but one thing what was always remaining true is on the side of it, I was going home to my, my dorm, my sort of uh, bedroom on the evening. And I, I was running a, I remember back then I was reselling web hosting, still sort of helping people with sites. I had all these affiliate sites out there ranked in Google. I just built up over the years, generating a, a modest five figure income from affiliate commission. Wow. Um, and as I was out, actually, I was out in the Middle East. I was in Qatar, I was in a bunker. Um, I sat there thinking my ambition's bigger than what I'm doing here in the military. I could have gone off down the, the officer route and that was definitely viable for me. 
Um, but I found myself thinking I can commercialize what I'm doing here. So I phoned my best friend, John, he phones the accountant, he registers a business and we start our first agency, digital agency called Webfold. And we went on to launch and deploy 600 plus websites, 200 plus SEO campaigns that were continuous sort of aggressive, not just local SEO, like aggressive SEO campaigns. And during that tenure was um, built an e-commerce website using SEO and sort of the early Google PPC and built that to around two and a half million a month in, in revenue. Um, that was a client. It was a profit share that deal we had. Um, from there, went on big into the dental world. I still own a dental agency that oh, is, wow. is leading Legion businesses for Invisalign uh, teeth training product. You have very straight teeth, so that does kind of make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely leverage that. But the point, the, re- the, the reason I raise all that is yeah. through that period, um, every single scenario, technical, um, strategic traffic conversion we were tested with. I mean, uh, I, we don't have time to go into the depths of sure. it, but um, two o'clock in the morning trying to fix Magento stores that are doing seven figures a month in, in revenue whilst trying to keep a network afloat that has a demand of four or 5,000 leads a month for a 5,000 pound product. Like Jeez. if there was a place to figure out traffic, conversion, customer journey, Value, value proposition on a product. It was those days of hustling from my back bedroom to my mother-in-law's garage to a full office and 25 staff. Uh, so that was kind of that mid period. That's, that's quite, so it's, you had a very heavy e-commerce background then. Has it always been on the agency side or have you like, what have, yeah, has it always been on the agency side, I guess is actually. Yeah, so I'd say, I'd say heavy e com. I mean, we did have a couple of large e-com engagements, but primarily it was more focused on sort of lead gen traffic and conversion. Okay. Um, and then as we got into the sort of e-com space, it was like, well, how do we apply that to a different buying journey? Yeah. What are the touch points here? What does that look like? What's What journey do we need to take this customer on to generate that conversion event? Um and it was technical back then. I mean, we built this store. It was built in Magento with a custom link to the stock market to get the price of gold. And wow. Yeah, it was it was intense. And we were doing this whole thing on a bootstrap with a with a, an Indian development back office. And yeah, it was it, it was a challenge, but it taught us everything we know today. But along that journey, I was always looking for something more sustainable and tangible for myself. Sure. Like a real business, as I call it. Um and I received one of uh, Amazing Selling Machine's early affiliate emails. It was ASM3. Oh, wow. Okay. In a very short amount of time, I sort of convinced John, my business partner, um, to invest in this. I was out to Vegas, went to the event. And um, yeah, our first product was... Um, so is this, is this 2014, ads. 2013? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sort of yeah. 20, early 2014 it okay. was. Okay, yeah. So you... Um, sorry, go ahead. Doggy? Yeah, so, it's, uh, so it's, uh, the first product was a set of uh, doggy... P pads. I don't know what you call them in America. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, you know it's a very good description. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's And then we went on from there, but really the first year we messed around because we still had the agency. We were up to about 20 staff or something at that point. Um, so we still had this ma- massive client business, this massive client demand. We were somewhat slaves to the, the client business mm-hmm. and we were trying to run the Amazon brand business as like this side project out of the same team. Okay. Um, so f- about a year in, um, my friend Lydon, who I grew up with in Tenerife, you've met Lydon. He yeah. he phoned me. He was like, "Hey, what you got going on?" I said, "Come and figure this Amazon stuff out." And at that point, we split the the businesses and really focused in and went on. And from there, the last few years have been a bit of a whirlwind. We um, I got a name for myself quite quickly within the ASM community because there wasn't yeah. that many guys like me around there, technical skills, strategic skill with the experience to back it up. Um, and yeah, met Athena whole China magic piece Jeez, ran yeah. six trips to China magic. You, you guys are the, the epitome of yin and yang. <laughs> <laughs> A lot now, of I people even, say that. You know, it's so funny cause I say that, but I don't totally mean that. Cause it's not like you're drastically different personalities, but drastically different, seemingly skill sets. Yeah. That's what I mean in terms of yin and yang. She is like a master, master marketer. And you have like just the technical knowledge that would just blow anyone out of the water. So that's, it's a very cool partnership. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah no, we definitely, we de- there definitely is some magic between us and it definitely does show up. We're, we're very proud of that. Um, so yeah, I ended up um, going out to China with Athena on China Magic, leading five or six trips where we take 100 people twice a year, teach them how to source, 12 days of mastermind. So that was fun. Um, out the back of that, um, I was already involved in some sort of coaching. I kind of f- fell into it really because a lot of people were asking me, how are you? Um, how do you produce the results you do? I see you're helping so many people. Can you yeah. help me? And what I learned very quickly is 
you can go out there and just help people but one two percent of them actually ever take action and take it seriously because they have no investment in it yeah they're not there's there's no reason for them to show up other than you've taken time out of your day to show them your systems and and show them what needs to be done right um so i fell into a paid coaching business back then um if you're talking sort of three-ish years ago now um and it was good and it sort of showed me actually what can be done when you really um have people that are investing in their success they're committed they're taking this business seriously they're working towards a goal yeah now alongside china magic was growing growing quickly and out the back of that we figured we create life-changing results in 12 days Mm -hmm. Uh, we see it no no one else can match china magic's results because we have 12 days undivided attention on the opposite time zone of distraction (laughs) and we can really give people a paradigm shift in that amount of time Um, how do we extend this and that's where titan network was born so yeah, Titan Network Dana, is didn't the you mastermind do, that never stops. Didn't you go on to China Network? I did. I was, I don't remember which one it was, but yeah, Dan, you and I met in China and yeah. it was 2018, July 2018. So a fifth one or something like yeah, that, yeah, fourth yeah. one. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. China Magic 4 or 5 that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember, man. It was, uh, it was a good trip, wasn't it? Yeah, well, and at that time, so I, I, I can be a personal attest to this because I found a manufacturer at that time that was able to produce my product for nearly half of what I was already paying. Wow. That's awesome. And for anyone who's wondering, because you, you're hearing a voice <laughs> yeah. and not seeing anyone, that's Danan. <laughs> He's uh, at the audio table. Yeah. Yep, I yeah. am here. Danan or Justin, depending on how you know him. Yeah. And he so no, through that experience, I mean, there was lots of ups and downs, triumphs. Um, like I say, hundreds of thousands of, of dollars spent yeah. in various different projects, products uh, to get where I am today. And I'm kind of paraphrasing and shortening that down, but that's kind of the journey. Yeah. And then now Time Network, uh, one of the largest sort of communities of experienced sellers that I know of. Um, and we really are just sort of redefining strategy, redefining what it means to be successful in this business. Yeah. And it's interesting because like from an external perspective, like looking at you guys from the outside, it's kind of apparent that, you know, there are a bunch of groups out there, but Mm. it's very apparent that of the groups, you're the most aggressively growing, which sure you could attribute that to your marketing, but that also, to me, that's always a good sign for anyone who's looking at a group, because that means that there's enough value that you've got that word of mouth spreading around. Oh, hundred percent. And I'm yeah. conscious of that as well. Yeah. Uh, we actually set up a page recently, titannetwork.com forward slash proof, just to kind of answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a wall full of the results that we're capturing, like hundred percent year on year, 40% month on month growth after joining Titan, these types of results. So yeah. I'm a big believer in sort of standing behind what you do and the integrity of results. Yeah. Um, it's kind of how I operate and, and, I stand by the results we generate. I show, I share results that I personally generate in, in the brands that we're partnered in. Um, and yeah, Titan's definitely doing that in more ways than one, more than just monetary, but it's showing up in life goals in, yeah. in financial clarity. And uh, I mean, everything is really showing up around the board. It's awesome. Yeah. And you know, Amazon, I come from, <laughs> I I've had a lot of different background, but like I was, I was in the finance industry for five years And that was mainly insurance, a bit of investing. And that was one of those industries. If you found like an industry secret, you told literally nobody. You you took that information and just hit it deep within your gut because that was a very dog eat dog. It's, It's not, Amazon is a different beast. Like I've seen a couple of these different groups and even these groups as separate groups are happy to interchange ideas within each other. Cause I think it's sort of an interesting mix, um, especially with Amazon, because you've got your white hat and your black hat, and maybe sure you've got a little bit of gray hat in there, but it almost does seem like the white hat are happy with having other white hat competition in there because healthy growth is gonna help everyone. Mm. And I, and I just see that among these groups and it's, it's unique within Amazon. And it's an amazing thing for anyone who actually gets deep enough in there to see it, because this is probably one of the most beautiful, I guess, um, groups, Titan, you know, amazing ASM. Um, but this, this whole ecosystem is, is, is special, I would say. Yeah, I appreciate recognizing that. We definitely come at it from a growth mindset, yeah. an abundance mindset. There can be a lot of scarcity 
in this industry, there can be groups and, and certain communities and people that approach it slightly differently, a bit more closed off. But we genuinely believe, I mean, there's this t- Amazon as a platform, if it wasn't growing already faster than any seller could ever serve, COVID has just accelerated that. And we're seeing yeah. things like five years e-commerce growth in, in the course of 90 days. And if anything, right now, there, there is more demand than ever on this platform. But with demand comes more competition. And I think those that really invest in their competitive advantage by surrounding themselves by people ahead of them in that process and surrounding themselves with like-minded people that are all figuring out the same stuff, it means we can divide and conquer and really grow and benefit together. And we see that showing up within Titan every single day. We we see people realizing they're selling the same products and figuring out how to maximize on that, how to yeah. share suppliers, how to bring and beg costs down. That's awesome. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, okay, you brought up COVID, uh, which is great because I feel like you know, COVID is like tantamount to half of our, half of our dictating half of our lives right now. Yeah. So, um, not necessarily from a strategy perspective, but what is your, if you were to have someone step back, is where does COVID take us long-term with e-commerce? You know, what is kind of like your perspective in, Mm. what should someone's mindset be right now, coming into Amazon newly or a veteran? Complete, complete opportunity for growth. Um, COVID has changed human behavior. It has accelerated the adoption of e-commerce a minimum of five years. Some some bodies are predicting further. Wow. My nan is now shopping on Amazon, and I never <laughs> thought I'd see that day. Um, so what has happened is, whereas um, habits, routine had us going to maybe different platforms or the, or the high street or popping down to the local shop for certain types of products, we've broken that belief system. And not only have we broken the belief system towards habits of certain products being brought away from the internet Mm -hmm. um companies and larger sort of organizations with more buying power are now being forced to these online platforms as well because of remote working because um of needing to uh, properly set their staff up everything about covid is just accelerated growth now with that it has brought a number of limiting challenges um we're involved in a brand that we launched around 30 days ago literally about 29 days ago um, in a very competitive category. We've got number one new release. We're in the top 10 for some hit, hard hitting terms. And we've got this one ace into three grand a day in under 30 days. So we're just scraping a hundred grand in under 30 days wow. a month. Um, now I'm sat here going, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. But I'm also sat here going, it could be 300 grand if there wasn't inventory limits in place. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. I think there's, there's, there's good and the bad, but the good far outweighs the bad. Right. And anyone who sees that opportunity, um, the next five years are the golden era of e-commerce. Okay. It's interesting because now this is a perspective. Uh, I was on Market Watch the other day about Black Friday and in the, I believe it was in the US, uh, $10.8 billion in sales on online. And only 20% of that was Amazon. 20% of all, is it online globally or is that US? That was, I believe, US. Now, okay, that's, that's what's, interesting because normally that interesting? one in every two dollars. That's right. So do you see this kind of like from your perspective? It, now, now that could also be, I've been trying, I've, I brought this up to now you, but then the previous person I was talking to on this. Um, it's an interesting fact because like you mentioned, you've got all of these other retailers that have never had to go online before. So do you, what do you kind of like take of that? Now, I think it's a good sign because it means that we've got a little bit more diversity. Like yeah. of your, of your, I guess, kind of crew, are you seeing also that diversity outside of Amazon occurring or is it a, is it, is, are you guys really heavily focused Amazon? Really heavily focused on Amazon. Um, I think if we dived into that data, you'll probably find other platforms started putting more aggressive Black Friday offers up to pull people away from the Amazon hype. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pro- if, you, if we got some context around the data, you'd probably find there's some trends like that in there. Um, but I believe um, it, it also depends on your goals as well. Like one thing I see sellers doing is getting this shiny object syndrome where they try and do Amazon, they try and do Walmart, they try and go off into foreign yeah. country platforms, like huge platforms in places like China. Uh, when all their goal really is to either grow this thing to a tidy million dollar profit a year, or maybe exit it in a couple of years for four or five million, as many of our sort of Titan leaders have. Um, when And the only place they need to be to achieve that is Amazon. Right. 
yeah. unless you're going after like even friends that are doing sort of nine figures now on the platform um, to start distracting and, and diluting your focus, your team's focus, your inventory capability, your cash flow capability into other platforms, I believe is quite short sighted because unless you get that diversification up over sort of 20, 25 percent of your profit base, mm -hmm then it's not going to add to any valuation. Sure. It could be seen as a distraction by investors. So again, it comes back. I mean, it's a very open question, but it comes back oh, on it, what But it's a good answer. Is. It's a it's a really cool answer because it's, it's a good point. As an Amazon seller, that is distraction. Yeah. Where there's no, you're right. There's no, there's no knowing, you know, how much feed into e-commerce that's been from other areas, marketing specific, but that's a really good point. So it's like kind of like assess what is your objective on this and then really see kind of like what's the best platform to get you there. Do you now <laughs> this is a setup question. Um, do you <laughs> <laughs> do you see Amazon as by far the, the best platform then from all of your experience? It's the, it's the lion's share. Like is there low six figures, high five figures, low six figures um, available elsewhere that's easier to get? Sure. Okay. Yes. Is it going to scale to the volume that you can scale at the speed you can scale Amazon? No. Um, and if we really sort of bring some some context to it, um, is the maturity of these other platforms where that is available going to be there or is it just going to get snapped up by bigger fish that realize that later down the line and then you're, you're back to square one? Sure. I think there's a thousand ways to approach any e-commerce goal. Uh, and there's a thousand ways to build an Amazon business, but the correct way, the right way for you is determined by your goal. And then you have to ask yourself, what is the path of least resistance? Mm -hmm. What's the simplest way of achieving it? And with the maturity of where we are with Amazon as a platform, the communities, the training, the tools, um, the innovation, all that work that's been done before you, if all you do is listen right, and, and you're here to listen, then you can navigate that quite quickly. Like I say, we launched a brand 30 days ago and we've got to 100,000 a month in revenue. Yeah, so it. it's kind of like Amazon is no longer the wild, wild west that it was like five years ago. This is sort of like that. I guess you could say if you're diligent enough, you work hard enough and you actually, <laughs> this is this is something I've surveyed. I've surveyed many people about this, yeah. um, specifically people who have gone through ASM or something like that. Yeah. And in, in a lot of the cases of failure, their biggest problem is that they were told to do ABC and they just didn't do ABC. Yeah. Yeah. Like they did something completely different. You know, I, I was supposed to stick to this criteria, but I went with my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Heart's great for building a brand, but to yeah. make sure it's built on a base of logic. Totally. Um, and I think, look, with this, like I'm all for direct Shopify plays, building the brand up. But let's get into that once we've got a six, seven figure base. We're sure. generating a viable business with a proper support team, with the, the proper time and resource to invest what it takes to go and do that. Yeah, It's a lot easier to fish in a pond full of fish as opposed to going out to sea with some nets trying to find the fish. Sure. Um, and that's kind of what Amazon is. So it depends, again, it really depends on what your goals are, where you are in your journey and what you want from, from e-commerce and the lifestyle, the business, the finances. But ultimately, Amazon is always going to tick that box to, to begin with. Awesome. Um, so then going into 2021, I guess you could, uh, you know, pro tip, uh, it could be for, no, no, no. Sorry, not going to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that. We, we've, we've decided we need to definitely put up an on-air sign on that door. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely That's in need. Harming someone to the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to throw something, but I've only got a phone and that's a yeah. really bad idea. Um, but <laughs> so 2021, it could be for a veteran or it could be someone new, uh, new seller. What would you give, um, like if you were to give a pro tip, what, what's a tip you could, you could hand out? So, um, there's a couple pieces. There's a couple points I go to that really, if I was to, and you sort of threw this at me um, just a few minutes ago. If I was to really break this down, depending on where you are, if you're starting out in this business, you one need to really understand your budget and understand what it means to enter a market. So when you're looking at, you search for a, a main keyword. We call them a root keyword. When you're mm -hmm. looking for a root keyword. You can see the the landscape of, of of that result. You can see using tools like managed by Stats Retriever. You can see the the revenue landscape. Yeah. How much yeah. revenue each product's making. You can see 
quite clearly the review landscape, the average price in the category. And you need to ask yourself, can I enter this market? And then if you visualize it like a ladder, is there quite a clear ascension ladder that I can then start climbing as I gain more reviews? Mm -hmm. And then be realistic with, in entering that market, can I afford to one, source this product? And a quick nugget would be that you want to make sure that you're buying a product for around four times um, what you're selling it for, four times less what okay. you're selling it for. So buy for five, sell for 20, kind sure. of rough ratios. And then um, is the next guy above me or next girl above me in the few hundred reviews that I can, I can catch up? Then is there someone a bit further ahead that I can catch up? Or is the category a few people with like, tens and hundreds, and then thousands at the top of the, right. the castle. And just understanding what that landscape looks like. Once you've got that, it's then also understanding that you're not just competing on products. And this is the biggest mistake people make. You're not just competing on product, you're competing on keywords. Hmm. So for the most part, yes, that's the root keyword, but often those root keywords are broad, they're, lo- they're not specific, they lack what I call buyer intent, okay. which means, um, yes, lots of people are looking for them, but not many people are going to click your products. They're not telling you what they want. There's lots of longer tail keywords out there with more specific intent. Sure. And once you've identified them, instead of going, here are all of the keywords, it's about going, well, here are the keywords and which ones are underrepresented. So looking through those long tail keywords and going, well, actually the landscape of this one is completely different. The competitors aren't yet saturating this term there's an opportunity for me to enter that market okay. and understanding sort of the entry points, not just on product and competitiveness, but also on traffic sources are the keyword. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. So then, cause I know that the strategies in the past have been, um, a lot more, okay. You just want to be inside the right BSR range. Yeah. And that's really been the biggest thing. Make sure it's not over competitive with, with, with specifically reviews. But now is this a maturity point that's coming about because of Amazon or is this just a refinement that's always been there? It's a refinement that's always been there and I've been quite a big lob, I've been lobbying for change on this, okay. um, which has definitely been coming through. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a refinement that's all, always been there. Plus our ability to analyze markets and make intuitive decisions based on data mm-hmm. has improved. Yeah. And that, Im- that improvement has come through millions of dollars, not just myself, the community as a whole, the community as a whole, millions of dollars invested in testing different approaches, innovation, um, understanding what these data points mean and how we can leverage them. Yeah. The great yeah. thing about competition in this market is everyone wants to share their best stuff. Yeah. What, the, what does that create? And that's really what we facilitate in Titan, collective contribution, collective power. And if you listen and read between the lines, you can see what everyone's testing, what they're doing, and you can learn from that without having to go and do it yourself. Sure. Uh, in Tyson, we're big on this. We, we're constantly testing, we're constantly innovating. And then we very once we've proven a concept, we very quickly uh, professionally distill that down into step-by-step training and, awesome. by, and pass that on to members. Um, but then what we, the beautiful thing that we're finding now is members, and we've got, we've got 150 seven-figure plus sellers in Titan, some of them eight figures. Um, they're constantly testing in their own markets, then bringing all that testing information back to it. Mm -hmm. So I think where we've got to in the market and our our viewpoint towards product selection, launching, keyword research, kind of the main pillars of the business has come through a refinement and continual improvement because we're all constantly pushing the boundaries on that. Yeah, that's amazing, wow. And that it is really, especially because if you look at how large Amazon is as a whole, it kind of requires that you have that amount of a team effort. I think going at this alone as a business is, I could see that being a very scary thing to begin with, let alone trying to make end roads into advancement and really understanding what this business is. Um, It's sort of interesting because Amazon's sort of also being pushed in this direction uh, by Congress. You know, they're, they've been feeling the heat this year. Jeff Bezos yeah. has been probably in front in front of you know senators more than he probably ever wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wears it well though, doesn't he? He, he seems to he wear does it a well. Great job, he does a great job. You know, him, Mark Zuckerberg seem to do pretty well. Jack Dorsey from Twizzer, Twitter doesn't seem to like being in front of Congress <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, he looks uncomfortable for sure. Yeah, but no, you're right. I think for anyone to come at this now, especially starting out, seasoned sellers know this. But to try and go at this business alone with the volatility of the platform, the mm-hmm. constant policy changes with outside pressure, 
the innovation coming out of sort of collective thought and mindset like Titan, there's just no way to compete on an sure. individual basis. You have to be a part of a community that's ahead of that curve on the cutting edge, releasing uh, training and innovation and mastermind that really puts you ahead of the the 99% of other sellers on the platform. Yeah. Otherwise the platform just gobbles you up. Yeah, it's true. So then do you find that, cause like, okay, and we, we designed a tool um, that has been pretty big recently for us, which is PPC Logic, which is a PPC agency. And the reason I'm only bringing this up is not to like throw down a shameless plug, but more to say, do you find that a lot of your guys have their own personal strong suit and then they kind of like, add little team members or pieces of software or are a lot of your guys remaining that solopreneur and just piling on the skill sets themselves personally like what do you see as i guess a more viable or successful method of building your business over the long term i'm a big believer in operations and building a team around you that runs your business um i don't believe as business operators we should build businesses We should build systems and those systems should run the business. Mm. And then all you do is swap out people to run the systems. That's Um, So I'm a big believer in that. Now, if you want to get to a sort of a six low seven figure profit base annually and just have something that ticks over a small brand, four or five products, you might have one support rep over overseas handling customer support. Mm -hmm. You're handling product selection, sourcing, launching. Maybe you're running your PPC yourself or maybe you outsource that. Yes, that is viable and many people do get there. I kind of call it the scaling wall. Yeah. And what happens in this industry is most people get to sort of the the mid seven figure point, three to five million by doing exactly that. Okay. Them plus a couple of help and maybe an external PPC piece, which today PPC is more important for growth on Amazon than it's ever been before. Um, Amazon is following in Google's footsteps and essentially becoming an advertising platform Mm -hmm. with all the different placements and cross sales. Organic placements are being reduced. It's all about that paid real estate um, above the fold. So I'm with you on that. So people either attempt to themselves, bring it in, and then they hit this massive scaling wall and they're like, why can't I grow past this 3 million point? And the answer is, is because there's not enough hours in the day. You're not good enough at everything in the business. You haven't systemized or scaled a team out to do it for you. There's Um, no e-commerce MBA. Do you know what I mean? Like you even like I was thinking about, I was about to say like, oh yeah, if someone came with an MBA, but that's a skill set that is completely different than building an Amazon business, than building an e-commerce business. This is, you're right. This is an entirely new universe that no one really educationally is immediately prepared for. Exactly. Yeah. But I think as long as you come into it with a strong financial, operational, and growth mindset, yeah, you can learn the tactics. You can join communities like Titan and and pick up the advanced strategies. You can leverage tools like Managed by Stats to give you that real time data and insight. You can pick up PPC Logic to to run your PPC for you. But if you don't know how to one structure a business to make sure that the, the sort of the core five pillars, as we call them, mm-hmm. product selection, product launching, listing conversion, um, PPC advertising, and list building and utilization. That's the sure. Titan core five pillars. If you don't know how to put those things in place and make them all talk to each other, you're essentially a busy fool that's going to go around in circles and see little growth because you're just busy being busy. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I think providing you, you have that operational mindset, you can really scale this business. To, I mean, there's people doing a hundred million plus a year now on this platform. That's crazy. Um, I know. You guys virtually. have a nine-figure seller or two, don't you, in Titan? I'm sure. Yeah, that- well, we've got a couple. I mean, some are ambassadors and some are friends. But yeah, we've yeah. got, I mean, um, there's a couple now in the industry doing north of 100 million a year. Yeah. Some on the road to, to much larger sums than that. Jeez. And some of them have got big Chinese-backed operations. And there's a lot more to the story than, okay. than the headline. But um, <laughs> there always is. Um, but yeah, PR. I mean, accomplishment in itself, the, ser- the sheer volume. But that is a completely different vision to, I want to build this business to two or three million and exit for three or four million on a three or four multiple. Yeah. You have to understand what you're building here and what the team looks like. But one thing I would say, Curtis, to sort of round back to your point is... PPC, just hire someone to do it who knows what they're doing. It's an yeah. incredibly complicated platform that takes daily pruning and management. Yeah. But make sure that person or that system is tied into the wider business goal because otherwise the wrong decisions are made. That makes sense. Uh, and then, yeah, get good at bringing in help. Like overseas Philippine VAs, absolutely amazing. I've got over 60 VAs in my company. They're oh, some shit. of my best staff. Um, and just routinely process the business out. That's awesome. 
the it's you know Amazon is such a you know it's the only company where to handle a organizational problem Jeff Bezos has to hire a hundred thousand people. Oh, I saw that. It's crazy. <laughs> Happens. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, awesome. Well, okay. So for anyone who is new to the way we kind of run this gamut, uh, we do our our uh, main body for sort of our broader audience, which is, you know, anyone who's seeing this on YouTube, anyone who's seeing this on or hearing it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, that kind of stuff. And um, but we reserve the best stuff. Let's just be honest. We reserve the best stuff for our MBS audience. So uh, for everyone on YouTube, anyone who's listening to this, Spotify, all, all that good stuff, we're gonna sign off here. Um, some of the insight that we got here with Dan is amazing and we appreciate that. Um, for anyone who's an MBS user, head over to the Facebook page. Um, our, our closed user group. And we're gonna have another like 10 minutes, 15 minutes here with Dan where he's going to actually unload uh, a strategy. He was just telling me about it that is gonna blow your mind, so. And we'll have a link to the Facebook yeah. page. Yeah, that'll be in the description. So if you're seeing this and you're an MBS audience, you'll, you'll catch it there. Um, otherwise, this is what I love about um, off Amazon things. Give us a five star review. I don't want any, if, if you feel four star, let's just don't give it. Just just don't do anything. <laughs> we can shamelessly you wouldn't get away say that. that on Amazon, would you? <laughs> and that is exactly the point. If and and uh, to continue this joke further and further, if you figure out a way to give us six stars on Apple Podcasts, even though it accepts only five, we'll take it. Yeah, hack the system. Do anything you want. We're all we're okay with it. That that joke is as bad as my twinkly intro introduction. <laughs> Yeah, we probably need to stop using that soon. Um, <laughs> but um, with that, for everyone else, we're going to sign off here. And um, yeah, have a great day. We'll see you in the next podcast. Dan, thank you so much for everything you shared with everyone. And for everyone else, we'll see you in one second. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. All of that stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan.